G'day there guys, my name's Marky, and welcome back to some more stories from r slash relationship advice. With that said, sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, let's get right into it. Cheers. Am I the asshole for lying to my family about the gender of my baby? So I'm 11 weeks pregnant with our third child. We have two boys already, who are two and four. Both sides of grandparents don't know that we are pregnant yet, and we found out today that our third child will be a girl via MIPT testing, which is over 99% accurate. This would be very exciting for both sets of grandparents, but we're considering telling them that we are pregnant with our third boy instead. The reasons are, my mother-in-law literally yelled, no, when we told her the gender of our second boy, having kept the first a secret. She has also told me multiple times that I need to give her a granddaughter, and thus far, I've told her she gets what she gets and doesn't get upset, and that if she wanted a girl, she should have had it instead of just having one boy, my husband. We know that mother-in-law will start sending clothes, as she lives in a different country to us, as soon as she finds out. She even sent girls' clothing, hopefully, for our first, not knowing that he was a boy. And we are conscious of how our two boys will feel about things arriving for the next baby, and not them. The sending wouldn't be as extreme for a third boy, as we already have lots of boy stuff. I want to avoid the drama and upset if mother-in-law treats unborn baby girl more favorably than she did my boys. She already shows extreme favoritism to her favorite niece over other girls and boys in the family and sees nothing wrong with it. We want to avoid mother-in-law coming to our country for the birth. She came a few months later for our boys, as we want to get settled and think that if it's a girl, she will want to come ASAP. Our eldest was born code blue and required resuscitation, and before him, we had a miscarriage. And I'm worried about the added pressure on me to birth the first granddaughter from our parents. We think it would be really exciting once born if she's a big surprise for both sides, as she will be the first granddaughter on both sides. We can't say that we don't know because we are both type A, and they know that we would know, and we did with the first two, too. We are worried though by telling our parents she's a boy, when she isn't, that they'll buy gendered clothing though, or that they will be mad at us for lying for six months. Is this going to backfire on us? Would we be the assholes? Any advice would be appreciated. In the comments, Trevenna Rice says, Info. Why not just say, hey, we're not telling anyone the gender because of the way some people reacted by our second baby. So yeah, you will find out when the baby is here and then let everyone else think if this means it's a girl, a boy, or twins. Lying could lead to a bad start for your little girl, as people could be upset, and do you really want some family to cut you out after finding out that you lied to them for eight months? So just don't say anything. OP says, they definitely wouldn't cut us out, it wouldn't be that extreme at all, but I get what you're saying. Not telling them just means that we have six months of people trying to trip us up. Well, based on what OP has said though, mother-in-law sounds like the pestering type, as well as the type to assume that it's a girl because they're not telling. I agree that they shouldn't have to lie, but this family dynamic sounds stressful in general with trying to manage entitled personalities. OP says, yep, exactly. If we don't say, and they will know that we know, because this is our third and we always do all the genetic testing, my mum will constantly be guessing and trying to trip us up and his mom will be like, I hope it's a girl, the entire time, which will piss me off. Saying she's a boy means that we are left alone for six months to have our pregnancy in peace, and then we'll have very excited parents with a surprise first and only granddaughter. I'm not worried about my parents being mad at all. They are not like that. Hubby's mom won't be mad either. She will be elated. It's more worrying about them buying gendered gifts and being like, what do we do with this now? <laughs> Given how some people reacted to our previous gender reveal, none of you will know the gender of the baby before birth. No need to overcomplicate things with lies. This is the best answer. Just don't let anyone know until the birth. Set rules with both sides of the family. You said she'll be the first girl for both sides? Well, she'll be spoiled by both sets, probably. It's up to you and your husband to make sure the boys don't feel left out. The novelty will be exciting whether you tell them now or when she is born. Just make sure to tell your boys that they are loved and they will have a baby sister that will love her big brothers. 
Worry about creating bonds with them, and the rest of the family set rules. You can even say that you already have enough baby clothes. Nothing says she can't wear her brother's hand-me-downs, so you don't want an overflow of clothes. I don't know. I think you need to stop trying to predict the future. This is stressing you out, and have an adult conversation with all of the adults involved. No assholes here. It boggles my mind that people need to do mental gymnastics for situations like this. Like, to me, it's obvious that the danger, I guess in your mind, OP, is that they're going to waste their own money and time buying stuff for boys, and then they're going to put that on you because you're the messenger. But you can just say, I'm not telling you the gender of this baby because of how you acted last time. They can read between the lines with that one if they'd like, but then it's on them if they make mistakes because you are drawing a boundary with them. I feel like no matter what, though, there is going to be some drama. There will be much celebration, but there'll be drama regardless. I think no assholes here, though. Update 1. Okay, Reddit has spoken, and we've agreed that Hubby is not allowed to surprise his mom. We will be saying that we don't know, and addressing any hopes for a girl with a request to stop pressuring us to have a girl, and that we better not witness any gender disappointment if it's a boy, and if it is a girl, we better not see a different reaction or treatment than the boys ever. This message will be consistently delivered. Everyone worrying about trauma to our boys? We are very good in addressing behaviours and setting boundaries, with anyone in contact with our kids, and will set clear expectations and boundaries on the first phone call once she's born. These will be strictly enforced. Thank you for your concern and input. I do think maybe I worded this post a bit more seriously than it would have been. The parents would have been like, you sneaky rats, and have been happy, but I don't want them to spread the lie wider. So we will just share the unbelievable lie instead and try to throw them off every chance we get. We were also very shocked at how many people said that we were lying about knowing the gender so early. We are very lucky to live in a country with affordable and accessible healthcare and feel so grateful that NIPT is so available to us. Thanks again all, especially those who stayed kind. In the comments, Dragon Selica says, one way or another, you're going to have to deal with your mother-in-law's behavior. Lying now is just putting off the inevitable. I understand why you want to, though. Healthy boundaries need to be discussed. You need to get on the same page with your husband and figure out how you're going to tackle this issue long term. Dealing with this right after giving birth sounds like a nightmare. OP says, yeah, I already said that my husband needs to address the gender disappointment reaction that she gives, as if she does it in front of me again, I will lose it. For us, it feels like we can avoid any drama and have a big happy surprise when she's here, instead of having her beat down about how she treats the kids differently now. We will for sure have to address it once the girl is here, but it feels like we can avoid it for six months and live in ignorant bliss for a bit longer by surprising them, as opposed to lying to them. I guess my concern is how severely she'll overcompensate due to the surprise. I'm so glad it's not another boy. What a gift to be blessed with a girl instead. I'm sure you're understandably worried that your boys will hear her rhetoric and think she views boys as less than. I'm hoping they won't catch on because your hands are already going to be full with your mother-in-law. I already said to my husband that he needs to address the gender disappointment reaction. Is he addressing it or is he burying his head? If she does it in front of me again, I'll lose it. I don't think people here would call you an asshole if you did. OP says, Yeah, I just figured once she figured it out, we could gently remind her that she needs to treat boys equally and that there is to be no favoritism. It's a tough one. I think you would be the asshole to your current sons and future daughter, quite frankly. You know you'll have issues with your mother-in-law. Sort this shit out now, before your kid is born, and before all of your kids are forced to observe the wild inequality in treatment. If your husband cannot wrangle his mother into some semblance of agreement, go low contact, or even no contact, before you allow her to taint your children's lives. Good luck with her. OP says, She's actually a lovely lady. She just really wants a girl. Always wanted a daughter, and never got one, so spoils her niece, and wants a granddaughter more than anything. We will of course address this up front once she's born. There will be no inequality in my household, and if she sends things without the others, they will be placed in a cupboard until Christmas or a birthday, and she will be told to not send anything for that occasion. We will address it on the first phone call, gently, once she's born, 
before the boys are at the hospital, like, Meet your granddaughter. Now don't be treating her any differently, and make sure that if she gets a gift, the boys do too, or else, type thing. Update 2. The internet is so weird. People are mad that we don't want gifts coming for only one child. Sending non-occasion gifts for one child and not the others, and thinking that's okay, is crazy to us. Unless it's a newborn or a birthday gift, we won't be having one child getting random things when the others aren't. Mother-in-law is actually a very kind and generous person, and will respect boundaries that we set for our kids, and doesn't want to make anyone feel bad. She's just always wanted a girl, and that overpowers her reactions sometimes. In the comments, Off Kira says, OP, Mother-in-law literally fell to the ground crying and screaming NO when we revealed that we were going to have a second boy. But also OP, y'all, she's just the sweetest woman ever. So kind, so understanding, so respectful. She seemed so surprised that everyone assumed her mother-in-law might show favoritism when that story was literally the first thing we heard about the woman. Right? OP is so contradictory and all over the place in these posts. Is she concerned mother-in-law's favoritism is going to be a problem, or not? Because at first, it is such a huge issue that she considered blatantly lying to both of their families for six months, but somehow when the girl is born, mother-in-law will only need a gentle reminder not to do favoritism? Then why not just give her that reminder now, and give her months to process the excitement, rather than springing it on her as a massive surprise, and expecting her to suddenly magically start respecting boundaries? I think she truly underestimates exactly how out of control mother-in-law will act when she gets her girl. Or she truly believes that she will be able to see and stop any favoritism. How often do we see posts where the OP asks a question, people predict what will happen next, and OP says, My mum, brother, aunt, boyfriend would never do that to me. You guys are all awful. And then a few days later, they're back, and turns out the commenters were spot on. I find it really difficult to respect or take gender disappointment seriously. It just seems like preemptive sexism to me. I'm a sonographer. I've had parents burst out into heartbroken tears or have essentially a tantrum when I tell them the sex during the ultrasound and it isn't the one that they wanted. We usually leave those pictures to the end for a reason. We have an incredible number of what can be difficult pictures on the fetus. It is a very small part of an extensive exam, but it's all that so many care about. When I was pregnant with my second, my son was convinced I was having a girl. We tried to explain that we don't get to pick if he's a brother or a sister, but he was adamant that he was going to have a little sister. He was four. We took him to the appointment for a scan where we would find out the gender. And when the tech said that it's a girl, my husband and I let out a sigh of relief, just because we didn't have to deal with a headstrong preschooler. My son just nodded and said, I knew it. I have no idea why he wanted a sister over a brother, but he has molded her into his mini-me, and she likes to watch him play Minecraft, so he likes her okay. You guys have any of your own stories of gender disappointments? I'd love to know some of them down in the comments. I always find the extra stories so funny. Because they're just not things that I ever think of personally myself. I'm never like, hmm, am I going to be pissed off if I have a girl? It just seems like such a non-factor to me, but then when I think of other countries and cultures that uh, femicide is such a big practice, then I'm like, oh yeah, I can see why a lot of people think about that. That's kind of crazy. And on to the point about OP's description of mother-in-law. Seems like she might have a little bit of a Stockholm Syndrome going on there. Yes, yes, she gives me 50 lashings a day, sir, but she's actually my best friend and she's not that bad. I actually like the lashings now. Please, sir, may I have some more? Best of luck to that happy family in the future. I really hope that she uh, takes the advice the commenters gave her, but who knows? If there is another update, I'd love to cover it, and thank you for the story, OP. Our next post is by user characterguess4227, titled, Am I the asshole here for refusing to get my daughter with severe social anxiety a service dog and forcing her to get a part-time job after what she did? Alright, the title is long-winded, I know, but hear me out. My, 45 female, daughter, 15 female, suffers from severe social anxiety. It is incredibly crippling and has prevented her from doing many extracurriculars and even her education over the years. I left my job five years ago to start homeschooling her and have since put her in therapy. 
The therapist and I have been working on getting her into school more and more for the past year and a half. This is all to say, I am not trying to shame my daughter for her social anxiety at all. It is a debilitating thing to live with, and I can see that firsthand. Last month, the therapist recommended getting a service dog for my daughter in order to be able to help her navigate public settings better. Despite thinking that this was a huge responsibility, I did see the excitement on my daughter's face. She really wanted a dog and seemed determined to continue her progress with the help of an animal. I was initially on board with this and started the necessary research required. However, a few weeks ago, I left my daughter with my sister-in-law for a few days because my mother was sick and I needed to visit her a few hours away and my husband was on a work trip. The plan was for my sister-in-law to continue her homeschooling for as many hours as she could manage, but instead, I got a call from her two days in demanding I take my daughter back home. I came to find out that my sister-in-law had to leave the house for a few hours and asked my daughter to take care of her senior dog. The dog is very old and small. She was adopted just over a year ago, so she's still a bit weary of people. My daughter, in an attempt to recreate some stupid online video, took this senior dog to the roof of the house and left her there. The poor thing was so scared that she shit herself on the roof, shaking, while my daughter filmed. Of course, this didn't go to plan, and the dog ended up falling off the roof and into the swimming pool out of sheer luck. However, due to her age and size, the dog ended up breaking a few ribs and her paw. Let me tell you, my jaw dropped when I read that. Oh my god. This girl cannot be trusted with an emotional support animal. What? She will kill that thing. When I heard this, I was absolutely livid. I confronted my daughter immediately, and she admitted to wanting to recreate videos that she saw online. She then proceeded to use a defense that went along the lines of, that dog is old. If it were younger, then nothing would have happened. Me when I put toddlers on the roof instead of senior citizens. She also mentioned how she didn't really think that what she did was that bad, because it's an unloved shelter dog with no real value, like a service dog or newborn puppy. Straight to hell and don't pass go. Oh my god. I was very upset to hear these words coming out of my daughter's mouth. I have no idea where she learned this from, considering neither me or my husband share these beliefs. TikTok has done irreparable harm to the youth. I instantly told my daughter that she would not be getting a service dog. I also told her that she would have to pay her aunt's vet bill no matter what it took, because the bill is in the thousands. She will have to find a way to make that money. My daughter got upset and said that I was being unfair because she can't get a job due to her social anxiety, but I told her that she should have thought about that before doing what she did. My daughter has since then been attempting to search for a part-time job that requires minimal face-to-face -face interaction. Despite me and my husband helping her, she was only able to find a waitress job. I asked my sister-in-law if she was okay with my daughter working the vet bill off instead, but she refused, saying she really had no interest in having my daughter anywhere near her house or her dog again, and I honestly thought that that was fair enough. So I told my daughter that she had to find a way to stick with this, because that vet bill was her responsibility only. My husband told me that I might be an asshole for suggesting that our daughter pay off the entire bill, and that we should probably just restrict her pocket money until the bill is paid off. I think that's not a good enough punishment, because her pocket money isn't earned. It's what me and my husband give her for free time at the start of the week. Also, this bill is entirely her fault, and therefore her responsibility. It's unfortunate that the only jobs available are in customer service, but what else can we do? My daughter's therapist also reached out, saying that she thinks that it was wrong of me to completely take the service dog idea off the table, considering that it is a medical necessity, as well as pointing out that suddenly forcing my daughter into an unfamiliar job may be a bit too daunting. Is my husband and my daughter's therapist right? Am I being too harsh on my daughter? Am I the asshole here? In the comments, Despite what the therapist says, I'm not sure that a legitimate service animal organization would approve an animal for your daughter. Nor should they. She injured an animal, and only through luck didn't kill it. But when called out on it, she blamed it on the dog being old, instead of being appropriately remorseful. She should absolutely not have access to a dog. I do think potentially making her pay for the entire vet bill, as vet bills can be massive, is a little overkill, but she absolutely is not responsible enough to have a dog. In some states, mental health care providers are mandated reporters for animal cruelty. 
In part, this is because it has such a high correlation with child abuse, domestic abuse, and spousal abuse. Yes, and don't you think that OP should be questioning the value of the therapist who is willing to overlook this behavior? The therapist is lacking in that department then, because they still want OP to consider a service dog. It wouldn't surprise me if the therapist is under the daughter's spell. Not the asshole. Are you sure it's just social anxiety that your daughter has? I'd suggest getting her evaluated by someone other than her current therapist. Her behavior is not normal. Yup, this calls for a legitimate, full psychological evaluation. I'm saying this as someone who did undergo a 6-hour eval 13 years ago. In many ways, it turned my life into the right direction. It frightens me that she so willfully put an animal in danger. There is something seriously detrimental going on with this girl's mental state. Not just the danger, but the utter disregard for its very existence. It has no value? That is just terrifying. She is going to kill someone someday. I'm completely on board with these guys. I am once again succumbing to last comment syndrome. I agree, she is going to kill someone someday. Bro really said that worthless thing that fell off the roof has no value. I don't care if it lives or dies. It deserved to die for what it did, falling off the roof like that, stupid senior animal. Now where's the nearest old folks home? No reason for asking that question, by the way. I know I've been silly in the past, throwing around 5150s, but in this situation, I want to 5150 the daughter and the psychologist because what in the codependent Jesus is going on? Yeah, bro. Um, she almost killed a dog, so I think that it's a good idea for her to get another dog because, you know, lightning doesn't strike twice. If she was my daughter, her ass would be in that part-time job quicker than she could say, but, 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 no buts. Pay that shit off, you little demon. Not the asshole. And now, on to the update. Okay, first off, I would like to say that although I was warned Reddit was absolutely brutal, you guys did not hold back. Shout out to the person who DM'd me telling me to log out of life, and to log my family out of life also. I would like everyone to know that I read almost every single comment, even if I didn't reply to them all. And to clarify, when I said a service animal, I was told that we would be able to get one to alert my daughter of panic attacks and help her calm down. However, after now speaking to other resources, we were explained that what the therapist was talking about was an ESA, Emotional Support Animal. Apologies for any confusion, this is new to me. And yes, where we live in America, psychologists can prescribe simple anxiety meds. And also, yes, I obviously took away my daughter's phone and laptop after this. She is only allowed to see what she needs to complete her studies. On to the update. There was also a lot of helpful advice and support, so I do feel like I owe you guys an update. Me and my husband have been fighting for weeks now on how to handle this. We did end up taking her to a psychiatrist, and she was diagnosed with severe social anxiety, as before, and also bipolar. We were told that the reason she wasn't diagnosed earlier is because she was far too young and that this is something that most likely only became visible very recently as she just hit puberty. So no, my daughter is not a sociopath. Sorry to disappoint, and yes, we were told to continue homeschooling as it is too late to put her in a school where everyone has already developed their own friendship groups, etc. I once again had to leave to care for my sick mother, which left my daughter with my husband. Apparently while I was gone, my husband thought that it was a genius idea to turn up to sister-in-law's house and ask for my daughter to see the dog under supervision. My sister-in-law didn't agree, but was coerced by my husband. This is what I'm assuming because despite what my husband says, I don't believe that she would have been on board with this. My daughter started crying and apologizing, claiming that she felt so sad seeing the broken senior pup too scared to come close to her. My husband has since decided that in light of this, my daughter deserves her emotional support animal. I completely disagree with this stance and believe that she needs some more support, therapy, and a large range of resources not limited to an animal. Even if my daughter is genuinely sorry, this isn't a mistake that can be easily forgiven in a month. I still think that we should be punishing her to continue a part-time job, something she has been beginning to do. She's been sent home from the restaurant a few times already for panic attacks, and has even complained to vomiting during her breaks. I told her that she's welcome to search for other jobs that she might find easier, which she has started to do, 
although it's been almost three weeks of working, and I've asked her to do this a minimum of two months before quitting and finding something else. She's also not allowed to quit unless she comes to me with a different plan to pay the money back. My husband told me that he started the application process for an emotional support animal. I was very angry, and I asked him to stop, but he argued that he thinks he should take over her care from now and quit his job while I worked instead. I disagreed because I'm the one who's been handling it for six years, but apparently I don't truly understand how sorry she is now. In light of this, I contacted my sister-in-law and told her that I think it would be best that she file a police report. I do want this on record because as many of you said, they won't give my daughter an animal if they find out about this. She agreed and did file a report, which was totally heartbreaking for me. It really hurts to have to do something like this to my daughter. My husband did find out, and we've now been arguing for days. He's incredibly angry, but I'm attempting to stick with this. I'm not sure how the next few weeks will pan out, but I will say that I'm incredibly worried for the future. I have no idea what to do now, or how to get my husband to see my side. This is very concerning, but thank you for listening Reddit. And for those of you who gave support and advice, I really, really appreciate it. In the comments, Common Effing Sense says, this is a hill that I would die on. That girl does not deserve a dog, and you did the right thing telling sister-in-law to file that report. I know that's hard for you, but it was in fact the correct thing. Your husband is being a Disney dad, and in the long run, that is not going to help your daughter at all. Hopefully, real-life consequences will show her how wrong exactly what she did is. Your husband is an idiot. Her being sorry is not enough to make up for what she did, and is no proof that she should be trusted around another animal, especially with a bipolar diagnosis. Good on you for pushing for a police report. This protects everyone, including any dog that might be subjected to your daughter. Tell your husband to stop with the daddy's girl dad mentality, and to look at this logically. She is not ready for a dog of her own. That would be completely inappropriate and illogical at this time. What did the psychiatrist say about an emotional support animal? Maybe he or she should talk to your husband. I still say that you need to pay your sister-in-law back. You are still punishing her. Your daughter can pay you back so your sister-in-law doesn't have to wait forever. When you took your daughter to the therapist for the mental health diagnosis, what did they say about getting the emotional support animal? Also, I'd be wary about the second opinion, because at 15 she is still too young to be diagnosed as bipolar. They only diagnose adults with bipolar because it can be quite difficult between depression, anxiety, and teenage hormones to actually see what the normal for emotions are. I was 15 and they told me that I was too young to be diagnosed that way, but still I probably had it and they put me on antipsychotics, that I quit after a few months because it wasn't doing anything besides making me sleepy. Spoiler alert, addressing my depression and anxiety as an adult, and getting an ADHD diagnosis and tackling that, and bipolar has never been mentioned again. I'm tired of seeing animals be abused under the guise of being emotional support for humans. Thank you for putting your foot down. I also suggest finding a new therapist for your daughter. She may make more progress with someone new. This. There are so many irresponsible pet owners who are able to gain a nebulous emotional support animal status for their pet to circumvent rules that are designed to prevent people from being irresponsible pet owners. I loved this comment from Dandelion Buzz. Yeah, wanted to hop on the top comment to add that myself and a few friends all have various types of bipolar disorder, one or two, and none of us have ever thought to hurt a dog, let alone any animal, during a hypomanic or manic episode. OP needs to make sure that they don't use the bipolar disorder as an excuse to dismiss any of the daughter's issues. That is a major empathy problem that existed before the episode. Bipolar disorder is an explanation, but it's not an excuse. Explaining this bit like I'm talking to OP. While in a manic episode, you're really not yourself or in control. It doesn't change that it's real to others. Your hurt you may cause to others during it are very real to them. You have to take accountability for your actions during it and work to be better anyway. Saying, oh sorry I was manic, doesn't erase their hurt. If anything, it causes more pain because you aren't acknowledging what you did to them. That's the first big lesson you have to learn once diagnosed. Not accepting that will make life ten times harder. 
they should definitely wait at least six months before re-evaluating if the daughter is actually sorry and could handle a service dog. I'd personally push for a year. If they're going the medication route for it, it can take months to find the right medication and dose alone. The wrong meds can actually accidentally make things worse. There should be zero thoughts of even introducing an animal until she is more stable. There is also a husband problem. He's starting to enable her. She will never progress in managing both social anxiety and the bipolar disorder if they enable her. My parents didn't, and it's the best thing they ever did for me. OP, I'd actually recommend a phone job for the daughter. She won't have to leave the house if it's work from home, and they'd give her a script of what to say if she gets nervous, so it's not as on-the-spot feeling as a traditional job can be. It's pretty harsh exposure therapy for phone anxiety specifically, but I didn't truly start to cope with my anxiety until I had that job. This was a brilliant comment. Like, there is maybe less than 1% that have issues with animals. There is a totally separate percentage, however, who are very aware of intrusive thoughts that will ask them to do harm to humans and animals, but they actively seek help to stop these thoughts. Often it is a medication response, but very few do have it related to different conditions that are yet to present. Ultimately, knowing that panic attacks often occur when in a manic episode, this comment supports the fact that daughter needs to have other methods of treatment way before an animal that is supposed to help with panic attacks, but not manic episodes. Also, I'm hoping that OP also looks at testing family members, as it's often a relative who also suffers from this condition or similar. And I hope that uh, these words of advice can help anyone else that might have been interested in these kinds of things or didn't know a lot about manic episodes. We saw that one big story where the woman cheated and dropped 10 grand and sent a bunch of erratic voice recordings while in a manic episode. And in those cases, it's like, yeah, absolutely, what you did was wrong. And unfortunately, it did a lot of damage. But I don't particularly blame you for it happening. It's just that living with that reality of the curse that is set upon you would be really hard, and I empathize with you. But in this case, with this story with the dog, I don't think that this was a manic episode for her. The way she described the events, she was totally lucid, and this was a choice that she made. I think if we do get more updates on this in the future, that marriage's days are numbered, he is enabling the daughter, he is doing so much damage when he thinks that he is doing good by helping her out and advocating for her, that is a sinking ship right there that OP needs to abandon. I'm so glad that OP is sticking to their guns with this one, and I hope that they find a peaceful resolution to this problem. Thank you for sharing your story with us. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!